Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. It's been a little while again. Um, so today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my first impression of this RPG. It's more of like a hack and slash. Actually, I know that's kind of like the same thing, but you'll see soon. Uh, called Pagan Online. Now before I go ahead and jump into this, I want to give a, a brief little backstory. Um, I kind of stopped with the content for a little bit on YouTube. I needed to take a little break, mainly because I've been really... not I didn't know I was so bored, but I was really kind of burnt out of these three games, which was like Grim Dawn, uh, Path of Exile, and kind of like Meeting Excel. I would play them and have like a lot of fun, but then I wouldn't really feel the inspiration to make the YouTube content, and that's kind of when I can tell I'm burnt out, when it's not like inspirational. So I just wanted to try something new. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the day on my channel, I used to do a lot of first impressions, so... Um, I definitely want to try this one out. I'm not really going to be playing it for too long, but it's pretty fun so far. So that being said, I'm going to mute the Diablo 2 soundtrack and let's get started. So this is a game called Pagan Online. Now, when I first saw this game, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought this game was utter shit. But um, it has undergone many, many updates. Basically, there was this three-part build structure that they wanted to release. Um, each build is kind of like a big patch, uh, and we've had two of those patches now of the three. I think the third comes out on like the 27th, so you know it's going to be competing with WoW Classic, so this is going to be the game you'd play during the maintenance of WoW Classic. Um, but anyway, you know, um, it's $20 right now. There is no cash shop. There is nothing else. There is no, that, that's it. It's just 20 and that's it. You're done. Um, there is also, it's going to be 30 on release. Um, but with that being said, I want to give you guys the insight on it. So when you first start, you're going to have access to only three classes. Now, uh, of the three classes you're going to have access to, and before you turn the video off now, I'm going to tell you it's, it takes like an hour to unlock the next class. Um, it's not like Skyforge or any of that other stuff. The first three heroes you're going to have are going to be um, King Witch, which is a Berserker. You're going to have Anya, which is a life-stealing ranged uh, whip person. And then you've got Istok, which is the tank melee strength. Now, the characters are pretty cool in themselves, I'm not going to lie. When I first looked at this, it kind of looked like, kind of exactly like Torchlight Frontiers what it looked like was. It looked very similar to how Diablo 3 plays. Very little character building, you know, pretty much just you have a character, it's pre-made, you level up and there's nothing else to do. Um, so I'm not at end game. I've put about seven hours into the game now, and I'd like to kind of give you guys my experiences. So first off, if you are just starting to unlock another character, all you have to do is you're going to be doing the main storyline. Also, I know the movement looks a little clunky. I personally don't care, but the movement is more fluid in combat. It's just because there's no combat, so that's why it kind of looks like a mobile game. Um, not defending, just telling you. So. Over here, um, you can see that there is campaign, mission, and assassination. So you'll be doing your campaign. After you have done a bit in Act 1, it's going to tell you to do some missions. You're going to do missions until you're able to do, you get a full key. By doing the missions, you're going to get parts of a key. When you get a complete key, like I said, it doesn't take long at all. You can then do assassinations. There is no stamina. There is no fatigue system. You do everything as much as you want. From my knowledge, like I said, I'm... Like, like there's no there's no secret to pay to win that that's not people have been kind of throwing this around it literally doesn't exist it's just one time payment you get the game um, so under assassinations when you do an assassination and you kill the target you get something called like a hero soul and then with that you gain access to unlocking a hero so I started off with the whip person you can see here I got her to level 11 and I immediately switched to this guy which is the guy I wanted which is kind of a uh, life-stealing assassin high mobility uses a scythe very fun um, so yeah when you pick your character uh, you've got your standard inventory nothing too crazy the items kind of work like very similar to Diablo 3 slash Path of Exile uh, where you have like well I don't really know exactly and maybe not Path of Exile I don't know how the affixes work yet um, but basically you're gonna you know depending on how you scale your character you're gonna look for the same modifier so I'm intelligence so I'm looking for Intel I do physical so I'm looking for Intel plus physical uh, and then there's also like flat physical percent physical and then you've got like crit chance crit damage anyway moving on to the next thing there is also an energy shield buffer that you can do as well so there's like multiple defensive layers so there's armor that you can use which is kind of shit right now I think they're changing it could be wrong there's energy shield which protects your life pool which is not actually sorry it's called astral shield same thing 
Uh, then over at the abilities page, so you get like some default skills on your character, but then you get, uh, as of now, remember the game's not fully released yet, there are six skills that you can pick from, maybe some have five, and you can use four of them. Each one of them has its own skill tree and you can unlock everything on it, but you can't unlock everything, at least as of right now, I can't really unlock everything, maybe that changes. Um, so I'm like expecting to full auto attacking with reaping. So basically if you click here, you can see everything reaping does. So while I have this active, which my build sets it up for 100% uptime, I get a huge steroid of poison damage. I have crazy life leech. I gain bonus stacks of more, which is basically a uh, physical shred. Um, then you can see if targets, if I'm above 90% life, I do 50% more poison. Each successful primary and secondary attack, which is my left and right, I think left click, maybe left and right, uh, reduces cooldown, so that actually helps keep reaping up. And then I have double damage on targets below 50%. So you have little minor nodes in each one, then you have a big node. Uh, the big node basically super buffs it. You also can respec very easily. If you look, I have 27,000. I've respec three times in seven hours. You just get gold, click, boom, respec, very flexible. Um, you also have some stuff to kind of augment your auto attacks, speaking of which, boom, confirm. Now, as you level up your characters, there is a I think it's called legacy rank. I think this is it. Uh, legacy rank basically means that the higher your legacy rank, the quicker your other characters level. And as you level up characters, um, all of your characters are shared under the same one. So like, imagine you're playing Final Fantasy and you're just job classing. That's kind of what it's like, right? Um, the reason why I say that is because you do not have to redo the main storyline. The main storyline is just there. Once you've done one with it, it's completed. You don't have to like make another character go through the storyline again. You just go on that character. So there's the legacy rank that you have is tied to the gear that you can find. So when you're killing stuff, you're going to find it of the legacy rank you have, I believe. So for example, the highest legacy rank gear I've found is four because I'm level four. There's also a nice crafting system. A lot of people have been complaining about it that it's like two RNG. Um, I don't really know too much about it, but simply put, uh, as you're playing through the game, you're going to find recipes. Recipes are a one-time use. You basically put the recipe in, it asks for a base item, you find the base item you want to craft, put it into the crafter, put on the recipe, and then boom, you have your item. It's a bit randomized, but if you've played Path of Exile, it's kind of like using an essence. It gives you a guaranteed stat and then adds additional stats. Uh, later on, there is legendary weapon crafting and things like that. Each class has multiple uh, legendary weapons, which will augment a skill in some type of way. Um, so that's kind of cool. And there are a bit of extra enchants that you could not enchants, but instead of just like basic stats, like the higher tier stuff can have like attack speed and not just like raw stats, but it's pretty cool. So with that being said, let me just go ahead and jump in into some combat. So uh, the game is currently multiplayer with up to two people. Um, you cannot do the campaign through multiplayer. It will be up to four players later. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit battle and we're going to just jump in and fight. The game's going to look pretty easy right now. I'm doing it in normal difficulty. I just kind of want to get to the end game um, slash mid game and then I'll start bumping up the difficulty because I don't see the point in forcing myself to not forcing myself, but making it difficult for myself while I'm still gearing my character up. Um, it might look a little boring because I'm specced for pure auto attack. That's how my guy is right now. And one other thing to note is there are two things that I would like to say right now that are that kind of bother me. Number one, there's a lot of lag, and the lag pretty much comes directly from monster spawning. When monsters spawn, it does have like a latency, not a latency spike, but it freezes your game. The other thing is boss loot sometimes can be super condensed and you can't properly see it. So that kind of sucks because it's like 10 items stacked on one. And then the last thing is this arrow sucks and definitely needs to be changed a bit because it's kind of like misleading uh, when it guides you through your questing. Um, that being said, there is the option down here to actually uh, toggle auto pickup. So I've got a lot of things on auto pickup like quest items, hero shards, which are for MTX only. No, there is no cash shop. It's a separate currency you get only from running these. Um, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and go. So my left click is just basically an attack. It will debuff them with minus armor. My right click is a stronger attack. It gives me a, a big chunk of energy. Um, my shift makes me ethereal and gives me movement speed and applies a stack of my uh, armor shred. Or I'm saying armor shred, but it's minus fizz res, I believe. Uh, harvest is a teleport. When I use my right click successfully, it will reset the cooldown of harvest. Uh, e is my limbo. It's kind of like 
uh, Chronosphere if you've played Dota uh, from Void. Basically makes a bubble. If you're in it, you die, can't really do anything. Um, you can kind of do stuff, but it's really easy to dodge. Also blocks projectiles. And then my Reaping, which is F, is a steroid. We're goal, our goal is to keep it up 100% of the time. All right, let's go. The purple bar is the energy shield. The red bar is the life shield. Despite what a lot of people are going to say, I, I just want to remind people that the game is a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people take things way too seriously. Um, I'm not trying to defend companies or anything when I say this, but I remember when I was a kid. Actually, I gave this like a little bit of a speech on my stream today. When I was a little kid, I remember, you know, like I was in elementary school or I was in middle school. And uh, I would watch a commercial on television because, you know, hashtag no ad block and stuff back then. And... Uh, from from there on out, I'd see a video game. I'd be like, "Shit, mom, I want that game." I'd be like, "I'm walking to Walmart. I'm walking 11 miles to Walmart so I can get this game." And she's like, "No, you're not. We'll get it in two weeks." And I'm like, "Okay." So I'd get the game in two weeks. I'd get a you know bag of chips of salt and vinegar, and I would play the game all night. And nowadays, a lot of people are too scared of like, "Is the game pay to win? Is there a cash shop? Is there this? How much does it cost? Uh, you know, is there like a head start? Are there gonna be, you know, multiple servers? Can I play from here? Can I, you know, like what is the fastest way to do this? And sometimes you just gotta remember that it's okay to spend $20 on a game and play it for, you know, 30 hours and then quit it and then in three months come back to it and play it again. It's important to have that kind of like stress releaser. Um, maybe not stress releaser is the right word, but you know what I mean. Don't, don't judge the game too difficult. A lot, a lot of um, people as well like are reading the reviews online. And uh, if you remember what I said at the beginning of the video, where basically the game was very poo-poo like back in the day. It's also like no density. This is a really bad place to show. The game was like not nearly as, I would say, like creative, I guess you could say, um, back in the earlier builds. But it's gotten much better now. So I'm very happy for that. And Discord is also very, very active. But like I said, I don't really see myself playing this too long. I'm having a lot of fun in the Warcraft 3 Customs that I haven't really done much YouTubing of, but I'll see what I'm going to do about that. I just have to edit them. And then I may potentially be playing WoW Classic as well, which I've decided. There's the lag spike I was talking about. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing for this. I didn't really read it. Oh, here we go. Uh, you can find items for every class, but I believe you're weighted to find yours more often. Temple sinks of one. Okay. I promise the game the game can be a lot more exciting than this. Like I said, I stress the fact that I'm playing on normal right now, so things are pretty easy. Like I said, I want to just kind of get through the game. The boss fights are pretty fun. Uh, there's like, I think, six acts right now, and each boss has its own mechanics. It's not just like a hold left click. You actually have to like do the mechanics or it's not going to work. It's pretty good. I don't know if I'm supposed to escape the sinking temple. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to, like... Uh-oh. Oh, oh, that's all I had to do? Okay. No problem. Uh, max level's also level 30, so I'm actually pretty close to there. But um, I do believe, as I was saying before, when you level up other classes and you gain, like, that... I'll just call it, like, Paragon level. I don't remember exactly what it's called. But as you get that, um, I do believe you gain access to uh, more skill points, potentially, I think. And uh, one of the things that are coming in the next, one of the closer builds, I believe, is a loot filter. Someone could have been trolling about that. I can't actually quote that 100%, but a loot filter would be pretty cool. Kind of like how Grimdon has it, where Grimdon has it so you can, um, you can basically like, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for, sorted by stats specifically, because there is like quite a few items that drop and there's kind of like a gear score, but gear score isn't really accurate because you want to pick stats for your character, not just to pad your gear score, because then you're not really going to have a good build. Just going to kind of do nothing. Let's see if I can do another one where like there's actually mobs, because that was really strange why there like wasn't anything. It's much more enjoyable. Okay, maybe something here. Every hero uses a different kind of resource to fuel their abilities. Oh yeah, there's also, um, so like if you look, here we go, here's like an actual map. You can kind of traverse the map in a couple of different ways and usually there's a chest as well and the chest is on a time limit. So, if you get to it in time, then you can loot the chest. If not, then you lose out on the loot. Of all the games I've played, I would probably say I get the closest vibes to, like, Victor Vran Combat, if you guys have ever played that. the chest I think I did so we need to go there I think to the boss The elites can get pretty fun, uh, like before I had an actual build that wasn't just like auto attack. Cause since this, this setup right now with my F skill is like crazy sustained, it's actually pretty difficult. That's why I think I need to bump up the difficulty so the mobs actually hurt me more. Alright, I think that's pretty much it, right? Yep. Yep. Another kind of underwhelming map. The other ones have been a bit more cool, but anyway, though, that's pretty much it about the game. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Uh, I might check out some other ARPGs. I know Wilson has had quite a few updates in the recent times, so I might check that out, uh, but I'm not really sure yet. Also, I think I'm going to be playing WoW Classic since that's, that's I don't remember if it's 25th, 26th, 27th, but it's around there. 
Anyway, though, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.